This video will provide three points of knowledge. One, a step-by-step -step demonstration on how to calibrate this pH meter. Two, how to make these pH packets it comes with last beyond one use. Three, how it compares to this other common pH meter. Let's get started. The pH meter comes with this manual. Today's calibration demonstration will be following the manufacturer's instructions provided in the manual. The meter comes with three pH buffer powders, green 7.0, orange 4.0, and blue 10.01. Individual containers of room temperature distilled water will be needed for each of the three pH buffer powders, measuring one cup each or 250 milliliters. The pH solutions are to be calibrated in the following order, green 7.0 first, orange 4.0 second, and blue 10.01 third. Empty the contents of each packet into their designated container. Stir to dissolve the solution into the water. This may take over a minute for each one, so have patience. Perform this complete calibration process before the first use of the meter. After all, what good is a pH meter if it's not gonna be accurate? While I'm finishing this step, allow me to say calibration must be done with these exact pH buffer powders of 7.0, 4.0, and 10.01. You cannot use other buffer solutions that have a different pH, even if they're close. The device is not programmed to calibrate correctly using mismatched pH buffer packets. You may also notice that during the demonstration that my meter reads to near the exact correct pH before you see me calibrate it. This is because my meter is not brand new to me and it's already been calibrated before its first use some time ago. Today though, I'm going through the entire process again for the benefit of this calibration demonstration. Remove the protective cover by unscrewing it. Rinse the meter off with distilled water. No soap and sponge is needed. Then very gently dry the probe with a clean paper towel. Turn the meter on by pressing the top button. Place the meter in the first pH buffer solution. Give the meter a swirl in the solution, then wait a moment for the pH to stabilize. Here's a heads up on how the calibration process works. Then we can do it together. You will press and hold the bottom calibration button down for five seconds, then release, and the meter's digital display will flash. Keep the meter held in the solution until it is done flashing. Here we go. Press one, two, three, four, five, release. Flashing, complete. Power off, remove from the solution, rinse, dry. Next, we will calibrate the orange 4.0 solution. Turn the meter on. Place it in the solution and give it a swirl for a few seconds. Hold the meter still for a moment until the pH stabilizes. Here we go. Press one, two, three, four, five, release. Flashing, complete. Power off, remove from the solution, rinse, dry. Lastly, we will calibrate the blue 10.01 solution. Turn the meter on, place it in the solution, and give it a swirl for a few seconds. Hold the meter still until the pH stabilizes. Here we go. Press one, two, three, four, five, release. Flashing, complete. Power off, rinse, dry. The meter is now ready for use with accuracy. Rinse and dry it as it's done here after each use. When not in use, place the protective cover back on and store it in its original box. This will protect it from getting bumped around in a drawer which could disturb its calibration. Once in a while, the meter may need a recalibration or perhaps you simply just want to check to see if it has retained accuracy. Do this. Instead of dumping out the pH solutions down the drain, pour them into a clean wash jar and label appropriately. I have done this and the solution has maintained its proper pH for at least a year now. I keep the jars of labeled solution in my pantry. 
If the jars are well washed and dried before placing the solutions into them, no contamination issues should develop. However, if a mold or a film develops over the top of the solution, discard it and no longer use it. The meter comes with a second set of solutions, or you can buy more on Amazon, so long as you buy the ones with the correct pH for this meter. I used to use this meter to track the pH of my vegetable fermentations by pH testing the liquid brine. It worked well for that purpose. I ended up buying this meter when I was going to ferment some garlic and honey and wanted to test the pH of the honey for safety reasons. This meter is designed to be able to test not only liquids, like what I'm doing here with this fermented vegetable brine, but also syrups, honey, jam, canned goods, sourdough bread dough, foods such as cheeses or yogurt, and even some non-food items. I've tested my homemade toothpaste and face cream because I was trying to achieve a particular pH. The probe is external and more durable than the probe of this other meter that is tucked up into a protective casing. The probe of this meter very easily goes wacky or even breaks if it comes in contact with something other than liquid, and it cannot be easily cleaned. However, if you are pH testing liquids and only liquids, this meter is satisfactory. Like I said, I used it for about two years before switching over to this one. Not only is this pH meter more durable, has a broad range of what it can test, this meter also comes with the option of purchasing a secondary probe. So if this probe gets dropped and it breaks, you don't have to buy the whole meter again like you do with this guy, since you have a backup probe with this meter. Hope this video helped. And if you're interested in more of my beginner friendly fermentation video recipes, I have a whole playlist right here for you to check out. Thank you and bye for now.